Hello, welcome to the information meeting for parents for the confirmation program for the 2020-21 program year here at Our Lady of Mount Carmel. I'd like to share with you the uh, different components of the program first, especially for those parents who this is either your oldest or only child going into the confirmation program. Then following that, I'll share with you how the program's going to look different this year than it has in past years, and then talk about the online registration form. I'm going to do this through a PowerPoint presentation and then also going to the online form. So I'm going to share with you now the PowerPoint. We'll start there. So just give me a minute to get that going here. Okay, so here we are. And what I'd like to talk about first are the different requirements for the program. You do need to be a registered parishioner here at Our Lady of Mount Carmel. If you are new to the parish or have not done that, please do so. You can do that at the parish rectory or let us know and we can email you or uh, mail you a form. The other is that all the candidates must be of high school age, anywhere between freshman year to senior year of high school. And they also need to have completed religious education, whether in the uh, religious education program here or at a parochial school for grades one through eight. If your child has not completed those grades with religious education, please give me a call and I will work with you to try and catch them up so that they can be confirmed. The different program components that we're gonna talk about is each young person is assigned to a small group. Those groups are usually between 10 and 12 teenagers. Those groups will be meeting virtually online this year and possibly in the second half of the year might be meeting in person. There is the journey retreat. It is a three day retreat Friday evening to a Sunday afternoon. However, this year they might be different, uh, more so will probably be different. And I'll talk more about that as we get into it. They also have a service project component that they need to work on. There are three reports that they will, they will need to complete. The first report is actually due when you register for the program. And we ask you to register, get all the paperwork online done first, and then your child will have at least two weeks to get that paper to us and they can email it to us. In the email that I'll be sending out to all the parents, there will be a link to the questions for them to answer in those reports. There is also an interview. That interview is one of the requirements of the archdiocese. Every person who is to be confirmed must be interviewed by a staff member. I will be doing all of those interviews. And then there's a candidate uh, sponsor reflection day, which is near the end of the year. What's gonna look different this year? Well, first of all, we have an online registration. This is our first online registration form. And I'll talk more about that near the end of this uh, particular meeting. The um, eight sessions that we usually have, we used to have one per month going from October through May. We're changing that this year. Those sessions are going to be held from October through January with two sessions per month. And the reason for this is we're going to do all of the classroom education in the first half of the year, and then hopefully be able to do the retreats in the second half of the year. So in order to accommodate for the time that we need to prepare and so forth for the retreats, that means we need to do all the classwork in the first half of the year. Uh, as required by the Archdiocese, all of our classes, any classwork that has to be done, must be done virtually now through January 1st, and then we will have another evaluation from the Archdiocese where we might be able to gather at that point. But right now, all of the sessions will be virtual. They will be one hour in length with two meetings per month. The sessions will require a microphone and a camera so that we can see the participants and also have a conversation with them. And you will also either need a printer at home to print out the materials that we will be using for that session, or you will need to pick them up at the youth ministry office. The retreats will be held in the second half of the year, going from April, uh, May, February through April. And the format is yet to be determined. We are hoping 
that we will be able to do the three-day retreat that we normally do uh, because we have found that the retreat experience and those of you who have had an older child go through the program know that that retreat is probably the most significant part of the program and it really makes a connection with our young people in helping them understand what the sacrament is all about so we're hoping that we will be able to do the retreats as we did in the past however if we are unable to do that there are plans to either do something as a day retreat down in the parish center or possibly a full weekend retreat in the parish center but having them go home at night to sleep and then come back the next morning we're going to determine all of that at a later date because the retreat is such a significant part of the program and if we use the retreat center the cost for the retreat is about 180 dollars per candidate between the fees that we have to pay to the retreat center the cost of the bus the cost of the chaperones and so forth, paying for the chaperones to attend. So what we're doing this year, this is the only year where we're splitting the cost for confirmation. The cost for the classroom work and the ceremony and all the costs that go involved with the educational piece, we're asking to be paid at this point, which is $170. The retreat fee, which usually works out to about $180 per candidate, if we go to the the retreat facility we will ask for at a later date in the second half of the program year that cost will also be adjusted based on the style of retreat that we do so however that happens to work out we'll know at a later date the service project usually in the past the young people would work together choose an organization to assist uh, and then they would do their service project for that particular organization most of the organizations are not allowing the volunteers into their facilities because of the COVID outbreak. So because of that, what we're going to do this year is do food drives once a month and have all the candidates participate in those food drives. They would participate for a two hour time period for one of those food drives. You'll be able to choose which month you want to do that on the registration form, and I'll talk more about that later. And those food drives will benefit three organizations that we have worked with in the past. Ridgewood Social Services, the Father English Food Pantry in Patterson, and Ridgecrest Senior Housing. Based on the collections, we will determine whether a single collection will go to one of these agencies and just rotate them through or whether we will take what has been collected each month and split it three ways between the three organizations. The reports, they can be emailed to me once they are done. The first report is actually due upon registration. And as I said, within two weeks of registering for the program, we ask your child to email that to me. And more information on those reports will occur in the email that I'll be sending out uh, with the link to the registration form. And the other two reports that are due are not due until the second half of the year. The interviews are usually in person. However, this past year, I was able to do some in person before the outbreak. But then when we closed down, all of the other interviews were conducted on the phone. So depending on where we are uh, in the latter half of the year, those reports usually take place late May, early March through mid April depending on what's happening at that time, we'll determine whether they're in person or via phone. The Kennett Sponsor Day also is usually in April. We're hoping that by that April of 2021, we will be able to do that in person. But if not, we do have a virtual format, which we actually used this past year. If you're new to the program, uh, or if you are an, an Academy of Our Lady student, or coming from another parochial school. I probably do not have a copy of your baptismal certificate on file. If you are not sure whether you gave us a copy of your baptismal certificate, I will need one of those for the confirmation process. You can take, take a photo of that and email it to me, scan it. Uh, we don't necessarily need it, the official paper copy. So if it's easier for you, you can send that to us electronically. What I'm going to do next is stop sharing here and then move over to the online form to share with you.
This is what the online form will look like when you get the link in, the, in an email tomorrow. And the form is broken up into several different sections. The first section is the student information, and this would be for the person who is entering the program, asking for you know, the general information, name, ad, uh, phone number, date of birth, that sort of thing. One thing I wanna point out is the preferred name. This is the name that they would like to go by within the program. So for example, if a young man's name is Michael and he would rather go by Mike, you would write Mike into this preferred name section. So that's the name we would refer to him in the confirmation sessions. We would put on his name tag for the retreat. Uh, that's how he, would, he or she would prefer to be called. Uh, we ask everybody fill that out. So even if the child's first name is Susan and she wants to be referred to as Susan, please write that into that line. As we go down, there's other information there, uh, high school and so forth. We ask you to fill that out. Right here, <coughs> excuse me, are the preferred session times. Right now, these are the session times we see that will be offered for the virtual online uh, program. So please, we ask you to check the one that would best fit your schedule. If you, your child is already in a pre-established group and that group is going to continue, we ask that you write the leader's name in here so that we make sure you get assigned to that particular group. The service project, which I mentioned here, all the dates for those service projects split into two hour time periods, 8.30 to 10.30 or 10.30 to 12.30. You can choose which time slot you would like and the date. These are limited to 12 candidates per session and they are on a first come first serve basis. If your child has any food allergies or food or dietary needs, we ask you to fill those out here. If you happen to select no, you just move on to the next question. If you select yes, it's going to open up a box for you to enter that information. The food allergies is extremely important for the retreats, for the meals on the retreats and so forth, as well as the dietary needs. For example, does your child require a gluten-free meal plan? Um, or they are vegan, those sorts of things. So please enter the, that information for us. I'm gonna go back one minute. Um, actually, no, we're, we're still good here. Um, any physical or learning disabilities, please let us know about those as well. Here is a form that you're going to need to fill out. This is the permission form and the health form so that in case your child does get injured, this gives us the authority if we cannot reach you to seek medical attention. You would click on that form, open the form, and what it's going to do is bring up that form so that you can then fill it out. And uh, you would need to enable the editing, fill out the form. You can then um, save it to your computer, come back here, browse your files, upload the form, and it will load right in. If you have a second child, you have a set of twins or an older sibling is going to be joining the program as well. You can click this here for add another student and it will repopulate another section for the student. Fill out that information and then once you do that, you can then go, go on to the family information. This way you only have to fill out everything from here down only once. The family contact is the primary contact. We're assuming it's either the mother or the father um, or the guardian their contact information, their relation to the candidate, the secondary contact, who we assume is the second parent or guardian, um, your address, those sorts of things. We also ask parents to volunteer in one way. These are the different volunteer things we have for this year. If you're interested in being a confirmation leader, both uh, the online sessions or in person, we ask you to check those boxes. Overnight retreat chaperones, if we are able to use the Carney Retreat Center in the second half of the year, we do need those people to help us chaperone in the evening hours. The Zoom call chaperone, each Zoom call session must have at least two adults on the session. So we may have someone to teach the course, but we're going to need another parent to come in and be the second adult on the call. Basically, all you'd be doing is staying on the call where you are visible and listening to what is happening. The service project coordinators for this year, what that role is going to be, is being here for one of 
the food collections that we'll be doing with the candidates. So if you're interested in helping with those food collections, please mark that as the service project coordinator. And then Youth Center Cleaning, helping us keep the Youth Center clean during this time. Um, you're going to put in the name of the person who's going to fulfill that service um, and continue on with the form. Here's where we need the baptismal information. We ask you to put that in and please note it's asking for the mother's maiden name. So please make sure you put in the full maiden name there as well. Uh, the payment information, you have three different ways of paying. And this would be only for the uh, educational piece. It does not include the retreat piece, as I had mentioned. If you're ready to pay, you can just hit confirmation fee. It will, you can then pay by credit card for it as you register. You're going to put in your, your credit card information later on. If right now you don't want to pay the fee or you prefer to pay by check, please check off the pay fee of 170 later by check. I also know that there are some parents who would prefer paying later, especially those who are teachers and may want to wait until they have had uh, a paycheck come in in the fall months. You can check this off and then pay at a later date. There are also some families we know that are going through a financial hardship at this time, whether it be due to loss of employment or whatever else is happening. If that's the case, know that no child is going to be denied entry into the religious education programs due to uh, a, a fee. So if you need a scholarship, we ask you to check this bottom box requesting scholarship and the amount to be, to be determined. What you're going to fill when that opens up the next window is put in what the amount that you are able to afford and that's what we will accept. And you can then pay that by check either now or you can pay that at any point during the program year. It does not have to be paid at the time of registration. Then what you're going to do is if you had that second child, you have twins or a second child, and a sibling has joined, you wanna click this, box, this button here because that's gonna then add the fee for the second child. And then if you notice as you go down, it asks for your credit card information, you would then hit the register button if you filled out everything completely, it's going to thank you for registering and it will also send you an email confirmation that we've received the form. If it, your form has not been filled out completely, if you left something blank, it's going to tell you what field you left blank so that you can go back and fill those out. I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call here or email me at the Youth Ministry Office. And we are looking forward to having you involved this year in the confirmation program. Have a great night. Bye-bye now.